Hey folks, it's a pretty windy day here today. We're uh, gonna do a little work on the pad, clean up around those bolts. Meant to do it yesterday, got everything out and uh, got sidetracked working on the telehandler a little bit. So, show you what we were doing. All right, so the hydraulic fluid was down to about here here's the low mark and it was down about here so we filled it up to here of course later on we read in the book that we should fill it all the way to high so i need to put more in there unfortunately to put more in there this machine has a special way of filling it so normally you have to pull this cap off and then have a fitting and a hose that goes to a pump and so you can put the fluid in under pressure in order to push it through the filtration system so there's a filter in here that drops down into the tank if you don't have all that stuff to do that then what you got to do is unbolt these four bolts and this cap comes off and then you pour your uh, oil into the filter and let it go through gravity feed which is an extremely slow process and that's of course to ensure there's no contaminants in your oil that can wear on your system so uh, some of the bolts we took off turned out that uh, you know whoever did this before had stripped stuff out and it was just kind of a mess Here's a couple of the bolts. You can see from looking at this head, uh, you can hardly get a wrench on that. The original bolts are metric, uh, but these two holes here are totally stripped out. So they went to a standard bolt uh, to fit tighter. And then we put a lock nut underneath it to hold it tight. Uh, these two back here were good. So we ended up then going to town basically. We went to Tractor Supply to get new bolts for everything. And uh, we ended up going to our, uh, I'll call it O-ring supplier to get new O-rings to seal this thing up. And uh, yeah, got it all put back together. Then we ran it and when we ran it, we've got this pressure gauge right here this pressure gauge uh, basically says that 0 to 15 pounds of pressure, your filter is good. If you go above 15 pounds, 15 to 18 pounds is, uh, you know, your warning area. And then above 18 pounds, it basically means you have too much restriction in your filter. So we, of course, were hitting 20 pounds. And... Uh, everything works fine the pressure's just higher in there uh meaning the theoretically that the filter is too restricted and needs to be changed got online ordered a new filter they're not cheap and we also ordered a new one of these gauges which also was not cheap uh so this gauge here is stuck at I don't know six seven pounds and you know when you turn it on it pressures up but if it's starting at seven we don't know if when it goes to 20 is that even correct the filter could be just fine so we went ahead and ordered a new gauge put that gauge on there run it see if the filter needs replaced or not and if it does we ordered a filter as well so uh, that'll be a future deal to do and uh, I can't tell or not because we spilled oil all over it. So I uh, can't tell if this gasket here is leaking. But the only way to get this rubber gasket is to order a kit for that. Which comes with O-rings and, and that seal. So, uh, you know, that's just an example of how sometimes you start a day out uh, with intent to do something. And then you end up doing something else and everything goes wrong along the way but uh you know what do you do you roll with it take care of business get her done 
and you move on so anyway the telehandler everything is operating pretty good so i'm confident it's gonna do the job we need it to do uh, i just like to take care of my stuff and keep the maintenance up on it and make sure it's good so that uh you know i make it better not worse and that's what we're doing Okay, the generator is warmed up. We should be ready to go. We've got this uh, four inch, uh, I think they call it a diamond cup blade on here. Uh, we just picked it up at Harbor Freight. Not very expensive. And uh, we're gonna see if we can't grind this mess out of here. And just kind of clean this up. Get it ready to uh, mount our columns. So let's see what happens here. That actually worked really great. Came off beautiful cleans that up real nice so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go around and clean up all these things make the surface smooth and ready to uh, get some columns so let's get this done I tell you what that little diamond cup works really good this thing cleaned up real nice and we're hitting all of them just like that see very well and I dropped that forklift right on top of my exhaust pipe luckily I didn't drop it any further because it just barely smashed the top of it so we gotta watch out for that can't see it from below anyway this is my security system so I'm up here to get my welder and we got her chained up so we're gonna lift it off and take it down to the work area
obviously we've got a flat tire so I guess next time we go to town we'll take that off and go to discount tire get us a new tire and we have not run this thing in I don't even know how long I'm gonna say over a year since I've even started it could be two years even I don't know it's been a long time so I checked all the fluids all our fluids are good so let's see if this thing will start and I did put a new battery in it also like a champ starts right up that is awesome I do see some water coming out of the pipe so I guess I'm gonna need to cover that in the future it's getting a little rainwater down it so take care of that but it'll dry that out all right good faithful welder real happy with this thing All right, you might be wondering what I'm up to now. So, here's the deal. I'm here by myself. I'd like to start getting that building up, but it's pretty hard to put a building up by yourself. So, if you're gonna do that, you gotta be creative. So, the first things that have to go up on this building are some of these uh, big steel columns over here. So these big columns, I don't know how much they weigh, but they're still more than I can lift. I'd say, you know, well beyond 100, probably close to 200 each. I don't know. They're pretty heavy. But the way you put those things up is you got to lift them up with the telehandler. So the plan is to put a strap on the top end of them, lift them up with the telehandler, and then we'll have to be able to set them down onto the, the bolt pattern and then bolt them up. Well, if you had two people, that wouldn't be too difficult. With two people, basically one person can run the telehandler and, and uh, can take hand signals, whatever, and, and lower it uh, onto the bolt pattern. But when you're by yourself, you can't uh, run the telehandler and adjust the uh, column so the bolts line up and you can drop it onto the bolt smooth. That just uh, ain't doable. So I had to be creative and come up with a, a better way. So what I did, let's go see. I got online and I found me a hoist. So this hoist was called micro electric hoist, rope hoist. And it's cable, not rope. And so uh, this thing, it's basically an electric winch and it will lift according to the uh, specs I believe it was 1300 pounds so should be more than enough to uh, to lift one of those columns and it's got a remote control wireless so the idea is I'm gonna put this hoist on the forklift and then uh, raise it up. Basically take the uh, sling on the column, hook that to the hoist, lift the whole thing high enough, get it over the uh, bolt pattern, and then use this wireless remote control to be able to raise or lower it using the hoist, not the telehandler. So that's my uh, do-it-yourself idea. But in order to do this, 
I've got to fabricate a mount so that I can put this hoist Okay, so the hoist has two bolt holes here, two bolt holes here. So normally you would probably mount this to some sort of platform or whatever and you know, maybe even uh, something that moves in your garage, use it as a garage hoist. I mean, this is a universal hoist, you can use it for all kinds of things. But my plan of course is I need to put this on the telehandler so I believe these brackets yep so these brackets fit onto the the hoist and then you can mount these onto whatever you got to mount them onto so what I've got to do is I've got to fabricate a mount so that I can put it on the fork. So the idea, I think, is to fabricate a mount that would slide over the fork and then have something on that that uh, I can mount the hoist to. And that way, lift the whole thing up with the, the forklift, but be able to do the final uh, raise or lower, whatever I gotta do with the remote control using the hoist. So. Let's get to fabricating, see what we can come up with. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is build a box to go around the fork so that it can slide on. So I found these two pieces of steel in my scrap, just two uh, big pieces of angle iron. What is that, three eighths or half inch, half inch angle iron, so big, thick, heavy stuff, that'll be more than strong enough to do what I need to do uh, it would be nice if it was exactly the right size because then I could just weld it all together and be good but uh, if we put it together how we would weld it that's basically uh, three and a quarter by five and a quarter so that's too big because our forks are only four inches wide and about uh, two and a quarter thick at the thickest point so we don't want it that loose otherwise what will end up happening is you know as you go to lift or whatever this thing could flip and roll around on you or do something you don't want it to do so I guess we're going to have to do some cutting and cut this down. So, hmm. Do we break out the plasma cutter and all that stuff and plasma cut it? Or do we just uh, go with what's quick and easy and right there and use the cutting torch? I'm thinking uh, cutting torch looks pretty good but uh, rather than waste my acetylene I think I'm gonna hook up my uh, propane and use propane and oxygen to uh, to make the cuts so let me get set up okay if you've never used uh, propane before for your oxygen acetylene type cutting torch and welding torch setup uh, here's how it goes so obviously you need a propane tank and you need a regulator that uh, is for propane so this one specifically 60 uh, PSI G4 bar propane LP gas single stage that's a uh, Victor or ESOB uh, regulator we hook that up to our propane tank. We set it at about uh, three to six PSI for a cutting torch. We're using a number two tip, and that's that's why it's uh, that high. And uh, 
we hook the other side of course up to our oxygen tank and for cutting we're using uh 35 to 40 psi for that so we've also got a uh, victor oxygen gauge there regulator and let's see the key thing is a separate hose do not use the same hose that you use your for your acetylene for some reason uh, propane and acetylene don't get along and so you do need to use a separate hose for your LP setup okay so following the hose on out now I use uh, propane for uh, both cut and torch setup as well as uh, rosebud so if I'm heating for example I have a number eight tip the beauty of that is uh, if you're familiar with oxygen acetylene cutting heating etc welding uh, the thing about acetylene is your flow rate matters if you flow your acetylene too fast then it uh, creates acetone and uh, destroys your equipment your lines can start cause leaks become explosive whatever I'm not a scientist I uh, just know the gist you can research it if you want to know more about it but flow rates for acetylene matter so when you're doing something bigger and you need to flow a lot of gas to create a lot of heat whether for cutting or uh, using a rosebud to heat something real good propane can be a great option because there's no restriction on flow rate for it so uh, that's why I use it now I just bought a separate kit from uh, you know Victor they're owned by ESAB uh, so anyway I bought a kit for LP it came with everything I needed a separate hose I actually got another torch and everything so I've got a setup for propane and a setup for acetylene so this is a standard uh, 315 FC plus Victor uh, head and the torch on it is a standard uh, what are those 2460 so that's your standard cutting torch from Victor and uh, the tip is a Victor 21200 and so the 1200 is specifically for propane and uh, it's a number two size tip so that's the basic setup and that's basically what it does so uh, what I need to do next I guess is get set up to actually do some cutting which means I need to measure out what I'm going to cut, how I'm going to cut it, and get it ready to cut. So, let me do that. tell you what folks I hope you appreciate people that do YouTube videos
everything is more difficult trying to film it and it's even harder when you're doing it in the wind well i tell you what i've had my camera blow over several times just you name it if it could go wrong it did but hopefully we caught that cut pretty good so you can see here that uh you know that's a good clean cut um just as good as acetylene but cheaper and so lp works i use uh just a piece of metal there to kind of guide me to get at least a straight cut uh because you know i shake my eyes ain't as good as they used to be etc so that's how i do it one step closer okay it was a pretty windy day that made everything more difficult than it needed to be but here's where we're at so we built this box which slides over the the fork on the lift so that's half inch steel i don't think it's going anywhere it uh can slide on and off next thing i think i'm going to do is build a uh, see if i got a piece of steel that i can uh, drill some holes in and make a bracket that uh, i can weld onto the bottom here so basically a piece of steel going this way across and drill some holes in it to match up with the holes for the hoist if I can bolt that hoist on there, then I can weld the bracket to this box and it should be solid. So let's see if we can find some steel and hopefully make that work. If not, uh, back to the planning board, I guess. All right, folks. Well, it's been raining since early this morning. Uh, I think it started, I don't know, I noticed it around five or so. And uh, we got about three quarters of an inch of rain. And the temperature has dropped quite a bit. So it's, uh, I think right now it's warmed up to about 40 degrees. It's been colder than that. But uh, anyway, so like always, it just makes everything harder. So let's see what we're doing here, trying to make progress on our project. So I need to make a bracket that I can uh, bolt the hoist to and then weld the bracket to the box we built yesterday. So I didn't have a piece of steel big enough, but I have these uh, smaller pieces of steel. And uh, so what I'm doing now is my intent is to take these smaller pieces. These are... Uh, I don't know, three eighths or half. Again, thick, heavy steel. I'm gonna weld these together. Uh, I believe that's a butt joint is what that's called. You slide the two butts together. So what I'm doing now, I'm taking the grinder and I'm just grinding off a bevel. I need to grind this one next. Put that on both sides so that uh, when I weld that, I'll have a nice bevel there to get penetration deeper and to give me a place to fill with my weld once this is welded together then what i'll do is i'll uh, grind the weld on one side flat so that that's uh actually i need to grind both sides flat because one side's going to weld to the box and the other side's going to mount flush on the hoist so i want those flat so basically i'm taking two uh pieces of steel and weld them together to make a big plate then what we'll do is we'll figure out the hole pattern on the hoist and we'll drill four holes uh, so that that can bolt up and then we'll figure out based on the holes where we want the box to go somewhere in there and then we'll weld this bracket to the box and then bolt the hoist back to it and we should be good where we can slide that uh, 
foist right onto the fork of the forklift. So, back to grinding. So we got this plate welded up. If you're wondering what my weld looks like, it ain't professional. But for somebody who welds maybe four times a year, and the only formal welding training I ever had was one semester in high school, uh, I don't know. It ain't bad. It'll work. Definitely. Uh, it'll it'll hold up i welded both sides and yeah you can see from the end that uh penetration is good both ends about the same so you know not perfect not what i'm sure a professional could do but uh i don't think i'm gonna have a problem with it so all I'm going to do is take the grinder and just kind of hit that off the ridge just to make it smooth on both sides. It's not that high uh, because I beveled it like that so it was able to run fairly flat. So uh, we're going to grind that out, make it smooth, and then we'll have to come up with the pattern for for the holes probably what i'll end up doing is taking a piece of cardboard and see if i can mark it out and get my holes figured out and then uh mark them on here take it to the drill press and put some holes in it so let me get that figured out all right the box is all welded up brackets on and this is what it looks like so I weld it all the way around underneath on the sides, turned up the heat, got real good penetration, made several passes. So that looks built up there. That is not one bead. That's multiple beads with one wide bead on top. So I don't think it's going to have a problem holding up. I used 6011 rod. So that's uh, 60,000 pounds tensile strength. So I don't think the welds are gonna break. I did grind them down originally and check for porosity. Didn't have any, so the welds should be good and solid. I'm only uh, lifting 1,320 pounds max as far as what the hoist is capable of. I doubt I'll ever lift that much, but even if I did, I'm pretty confident these welds will hold up. So right now it's still pretty hot. I just hung it here to let it cool down and to show you at least the welded product. You see the holes there will bolt onto the hoist itself, which should pretty much center the cable right under the fork. 
Now I'm just going to let it cool down a bit. Once it cools down, I think I'll throw a coat of paint on it just to pretty it up and protect it a bit from the weather. If it gets wet or whatever. And uh, then we'll bolt the, the hoist onto it and she'll be ready to go. Now, that's the good news. More good news is my buddy got away early, so he's on his way up here right now. It's Saturday. So originally i was gonna have sunday and monday to use this hoist and do work by myself but now he's gonna be here so i may not even need this for now eventually i'll use it for something but i have a hard time walking away from a project unfinished so i figured i'd get her done regardless <laughs> 